are you competitive? Have you ever screamed at somebody else during a game of Trivial Pursuit? Have you stormed out of the room after a family game at Christmas? Have you ever cheated at the mums and dads race at your children's school sports day? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then I'm diagnosing you with competitiveness. And I should say, I would answer yes to every single question. We can't avoid competition. It's there for us. Love it or loathe it. Whether it's competing to get more likes on social media, competing to get a seat on the packed commuter train from Cambridge to King's Cross in the morning, or competing to gain a place here, Cambridge University. We never stop competing. School sports days give way to adult job interviews, which then becomes a race to gain promotion to partner, which then gives way to becoming competitive parents and living vicariously through our offspring. We're called the human race for a reason. Charles Darwin's theory of natural selection was about struggle and competition. In days of old, knights would have competed for the hands of beautiful ladies by jousting before dismounting and reciting verses showing their courtly love. These days, we post photos of our cars, dogs, and bikini selfies on Instagram, sit back and wait for the likes to roll in. But is it really that different? Some primary school sports days are now non-competitive, meaning everyone's a winner. Does this mean the message that we're sending young people is that competition has no place in modern society. I want to understand whether competition is a good thing or a bad thing. Does it bring out our best side or our dark sides? Is it our friend or our foe? I spent a large portion of my adult life as a professional competitor. I was a full-time athlete on the British rowing team for eight years in that time going to six world championships and two Olympic games. I finished my career as a two-time world champion and Olympic silver medalist. That was my job, competing for my country. I competed against the rest of the team in order to be selected and then went forward to compete against the rest of the world. Competition wasn't just a part of my life, it was my entire life. Without competition, sport is something that we do for fun or for health and fitness. It's yoga with friends after work. It's a bike ride to the pub on Saturday. At the elite level, sport is entirely about competition. It's cup finals, league tables, trophies, tournaments, races, regattas, photo finishes, and of course, our beloved penalty shootouts. In elite sport, competition is explicit and daily. As athletes, everything you do and everything about you is tested, monitored, ranked, and entered into a spreadsheet. If you like spreadsheets, and I'm sure many people here has a, have a soft spot for Microsoft Excel, <laughs> you should get a job in elite sport. You'd love it. And as athletes, we weren't just competitive about the bits that mattered. We competed about everything. Who could sleep the longest? Who could sleep the least? Who had the biggest muscles? Who could read a page from the book the fastest? And on one occasion, who had the smallest eyes? And of course, there were eating competitions. Every possible permutation of what, when, where, who, and how much was competed about. I'm sure we all know people who are stupidly competitive. I don't just mean people who take their amateur sport very seriously. I'm thinking here of the 21st century phenomenon of the middle-aged man in Lycra. <laughs> but people who seem to make everything into a personal competition. So if they're doing well at work, or if their kids are doing well at school, they aren't just pleased on account of their own achievement. They seem to take particular pleasure and satisfaction from having beaten someone else, from having won. Now, I definitely put myself in this category. I still remember how nervous I was the night before I did my driving test for the first time. Not only because I grew up in a rural area and driving was freedom, but also because I knew my older brother had passed his test at the first attempt and I didn't want him to have beaten me. I was desperate to drive, 
but I was even more desperate not to lose. And as it was, I did fail my driving test in that first attempt, and he does still bring it up today, 20 years later. In school, or outside of school, in the workplace, or in our personal lives, or whatever our children are going through, competition is there for all of us. As elite athletes, we experience it more frequently and more intensely than the general population. But it is part of the rhythm of life. Now, the reason it's such an integral part of life is that competition gets the most out of us. It inspires us to incredible performances. Without competition, we wouldn't have had the four-minute mile. We wouldn't have had Johnny Wilkinson kicking for Rugby World Cup glory. We wouldn't have had the England football team finally winning a penalty shootout in the World Cup last summer. We wouldn't have had, I think it's, they think it's all over, it is now, when England won the World Cup in 1966. Athletes don't set world records in training. They set them in Olympic finals. Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal don't play their best tennis in the first round of a minor tournament. They save it for the fifth set of a Wimbledon final. That's when they can reach those heights. What I found in my own career is that it was when the competition was at its most intense, when you are an inch in front with a minute left in the race, there's a gold medal at stake, and you are digging to the depths of your soul to try and hold on. Those are the moments that the human body has a capacity to surprise you. Those are the moments that you go, wow, I had no idea I could do that. When your company has to do a pitch in order to win the contract that the future of the business depends on, when it comes down to it, when the pressure is on and it all depends on that moment, we have to learn as humans how to get the most out of ourselves. We have to learn how to thrive and not be throttled by competition. Another positive of competition is that it teaches us to seek out objective judgment and to be happy with that judgment. It shows us our strengths, our weaknesses, and our frailties on a large mirror held up to our faces, and we learn to accept these and move on, because there is nowhere to hide in elite sport. You won or you lost. And it's a truism in life that many more people will lose than will win. In sport, when you watch the Olympic Games, the camera hones in on the winners, standing there celebrating, holding their medals and cheering. You don't see the people just out of shot, sat there, head in hands, feeling bereaved at having lost. You don't see the many more who fail to make it through the qualifying rounds. And you don't see the hundreds more who fail to make it to the event at all. Many more people fail their driving test at the first attempt than pass it. I'm actually normal. Or take an academic career. 100 PhDs, become 30 postdocs, become four lecturers, becomes one professor. Of course, some people choose to walk away, but at each stage, some people lose, and that's the end of the journey for them. I know what it's like to be that person, sat in my boat, head in hands, utterly desolate at having lost. At my second World Championships, when I was 23, we came fourth. It's the worst position in the world to finish. We were a tenth of a second off a bronze medal that we were very capable of winning. It was frustrating. It was humiliating. It was public. It was devastating. But that's competition. When you win, it's straightforward because what you planned came to pass. It worked. When you win, there's no questions. When you lose, there's so many questions. There is nowhere to hide in elite sport. You might lose the big match because your star striker was ill. Competition doesn't care. You might miss out on a place at your dream university or your dream job because you just messed up the interview. But competition doesn't care. It teaches us to become comfortable with these kind of black or white outcomes. Stand up and be counted. Competition teaches us to fail. 
But is failure really such a bad thing? Has everybody here failed at something in life? Probably something which meant a huge amount to you at the time. Of course you have. Failure is how we eventually achieve success. It is a vital life lesson. And it's one we only learn when we put ourselves into competition. But competition can also be negative. If we let it become the dominant driver in our personality, that need to win at all costs attitude, that's a bad thing. Doing anything at all costs is, by definition, a bad thing. It can stultify creativity if we believe that everything that we do counts and everything that we do matters. Perhaps we never experience the freedom from when we know our actions have no consequences. Competition and competitiveness can lead to self-destruction. It can be a nagging, critical voice in your head that tells you you're just not good enough. There is a dark side to competitiveness when that nagging voice cannot be silenced and that internal drumbeat that tells you that wasn't good enough, get better, never stops beating. It's a bit like a child who has negative parents at home. They get back from school, they're on a high because they did really well on a test, and then they're chastised and put down because perhaps it wasn't quite good enough because it wasn't top of the class. In sport, in many ways, the day of the big race or the big competition, the World Championship final, the Olympic final, that was the easy part because your competitors are a fixed standard. If you beat them, you are, therefore, good enough. You've won. It was when we were training at home, on our own, against our own standards, that that level of good enough always seemed just that tiny bit better than what we were doing. It's a bit like when a parent teaches their child to swim. They're moving away from them, always just out of reach. When we were out there racing the rest of the world, that was straightforward. It was when we were racing ourselves in our own heads, day after day after day, that it was so easy to never quite feel satisfied. I'm sure we all know people who drive themselves at work to an unhealthy degree. People who cannot seem to quite accept that what they're doing is good enough and their health and their family life suffers as a result. As a full-time professional competitor, I became intimately acquainted with competition and what it did to me. I learned how to nurture and channel that competitive beast inside me and when to turn it on and off. There was a training session very early in my career when I was a student at this university that I completed but I wasn't very happy with. The rest of my teammates got changed and headed home, but I decided I had to do the whole thing again from scratch on my own. So I turned on the lights in the, in the gym, I rewound the cassette player, I pressed play again on the, cassette, on the cassette player, I'm showing my age here, and I did the whole thing again, just because the first time it wasn't quite good enough. Now, later in my career, when I was older and more experienced, I wouldn't have done that, I wouldn't have repeated the session because I'd learned how to temper my own competitiveness so I didn't just keep flogging myself. Think about young piano players practicing their scales or ballet dancers perfecting the same movement again and again and again. As we get older, we understand it. We understand what competition does to us. And the critical lesson that I learned was that whatever the competition was, However competitive I needed to be that day, it had to be positive. I had to be doing it for the right reasons. Rory McIlroy, former world number one golfer, once said, could I work harder? Yes. Could I spend 12 hours a day at the golf course? Yes. Would it make me happier? No. And that is what the best competitors learn what to do. They learn how to be almost less of a competitor so that competition doesn't dominate them. So they are in charge. Competition teaches us to stand up and be counted. 
It teaches us to accept objective judgment and learn from it. It teaches us about failure. We will all fail at far more things in life than we will succeed at. It's a critical life lesson. I truly believe that competition can bring out the best in us. It's a profoundly human thing to do, and it's a wonderful thing to do. But only if we ensure that we have a positive relationship with competition will it be our friend and not our foe. And remember, there is nothing trivial about trivial pursuit. Thank you. <laughs>